good afternoon everyone this is another episode of the fellow traveler and this time we are out of Belfast and onto Bosnia and uh, to Mostar uh, FK Vela's Mostar to be more specific because actually I think there's more than one Mostar club I can see there Zrinski and Mostar is our, um, our rival and FK Vela's Mostar has strong connections historically to kind of communist movement in Bosnia I think maybe more um, maybe some old school like I wouldn't be surprised there's a lot of Stalinist types involved so not necessarily my politics but certainly like has a lot of left wing fans and I think Zrinski is more right wing and Mostar historically was quite a ethnically diverse city I think before Yugoslavia collapsed in the Balkan War Balkan Wars Wars plural I think uh, I have no idea about the complexity of the ethnic and political conflict in Yugoslavia, I'll be honest, but um, from what I gather from a, a little bit of research, Mostar is kind of, was a bit of a refuge before where well, there wasn't that much conflict and became just very Bosnian after, and so it's kind of a historically slightly left-wing city, but I think after the war is kind of a bit more dominated by Bosnians, and as a result, kind of... Um, not as left wing as it was before. Um, or maybe the Mostar fans are of an ethnic minority, I'm not sure actually. But um, if you look look at the football club summary of the first video that I posted like a month ago, it'll have a section on Mostar, on Bella's Mostar. Maybe I should have watched it before this video. Um, but yeah, so going on to the club, they came fourth in the league last season, which is pretty good actually. I mean, we could win the league in one season, to be honest. I was quite surprised because they, at the start of the game, they're looking like they're going to dominate the second tier and they did they won the second tier at the start of this game and then last season when I was at Cliftonville so that was when I was in Lebanon when I was at Cliftonville oh no it must be that must be the first season so as I was at Lebanon they stayed up yeah there's 12 teams in the league so they were kind of like near to relegation but not really threatened and last season they came fourth um, which is Champions League spots as well uh, not Champions League, sorry, the, the Europa Conference League, or whatever it's called, the third tier of, of European football. So they've got that this season, although I'm not sure how far we're going to get. And the club are expecting mid table, so probably not in the top four. But we might have a crazy punt and win the league this season. I kind of hope we don't, because I need to get a few leagues under my belt. Which brings me to why I'm at Bellas Mostar, actually, because um, after Cliftonville, after another season of winning the league in one go, it's really difficult to get uh, a club with so little experience. So I'm kind of happy if we get two years at Velas Mostar. And so I've lost the train of thought. Um, but yeah, so I went to Velas Mostar, that was what I was saying, because I looked at the lowest reputation team after Cliftonville. And I think Velas was either the lowest, I think it was the lowest, and Alka Gdynia in Poland and Lokomotiv Sofia and Velas Mostar were all on the same level. So I just kind of applied to all of them and fellas took me and in future I hope to kind of spin the wheel again and see what comes up and apply for jobs because what I really like to do is have the um, the relationship stuff that you develop from each club so I've got a few Cliftonville players that really like me I'd like to buy them especially Kian Flanagan but I don't think it's going to happen I've put offers in for Flanagan but I wouldn't um, hold out for that I think he's very unlikely to come because they often don't to move to countries with, I think, lower standard of living is the way the game phrases it. And I imagine that Mostar is a lot lower standard than Belfast, although I've never been. Um, yeah, which brings me back to the club info. So, last few seasons, yeah, now we're kind of like pushing the top half, but the board want mid table. And the team are pretty good. They're certainly, I would say, slightly better than Cliftonville, maybe considerably. So I had a quick look through the players and picked out who I think was the first team. So this is our first team goalkeeper. Um, yeah, kind of pretty good across the board. He's not quite as good. Oh, he's the one that they're pretty similar to goalkeepers. This guy's pretty good at um, reflexes and saving. So he's more of the yeah reflexes and handling. So he's more of the, the one that's gonna be um, what's the word I'm looking for? Just the kind of classic goalkeeper, good at saving and not that good at much else. And the back up he's kind of got a few more technical stats his handling is quite high so his reflexes are quite low so he's kind of not as good as a goal I don't know and I'm going to switch between the two so I'm not really he's not like a firm first choice he's I think ever so slightly better 
and he's older as well. Goalkeeper is often better to have an older one. And Raheem Mitch is 21, so I'll probably give him a few games and make him the first team choice over time. And the right backs. I think there's a similar thing here where they're both not great. This one's slightly less attacking, I think. Or slightly less good at attacking. But the right back is planned to be more a defensive fullback, as it was at Cliftonville. So attacking wing back left again, like we had with Ives last season. And I might try and attack more on the left and defend more on the right in a kind of slightly slanted formation with a kind of diagonal line like that. I'd like to have a Milanovic attacking, but it seems to suit better supporting. I'd like to have an in, in, uh, inside forward as well, which is good because Milanovic suits that. Last um, at Clif Cliftonville, I couldn't get a good inside forward, it was all wingers. But yeah, so there's the not quite as good attacking right back. And by Tarovic. Oh, no, no, he's, he's always similar. Kind of not quite as good, but defensive fullback. We've got a lot of centre backs, but we have two kind of who stand out as quite good. Uh, this guy's kind of better in the air, not particularly quick. Well, not any of them particularly quick, but good at heading. And Franich is not quite as good in the air. Got a few better physical stats, though. I think they kind of come each other a bit well. And so far, I think Franich. It doesn't appear to come up, but I think Franach is our only. Um, he counts as our only foreign player, uh, which is nice. I'll get to that in a second as well. The foreign players, uh, the other, the back, the backup sub, sir, the sub centre backs or backup centre backs are both not very good. I might try and buy another one. That's Kubar and Ramic. Ramic is kind of a beast in the air. Um, I wonder if he's really tall as well. Six three. He's not that tall, but he must get really high with that kind of jumping reach. And we have a good attacking left back. Or, well, I don't think he's, he's good, but he's very attacking, which I quite like. Uh, his crossing and dribbling are good for a left back. His acceleration and pace. He's going to be doing a lot of bombing attacks down that wing. And then tucking in. Um, let me get the tactics page up. Tucking in here as, as Milanovic goes in to the centre. So the kind of is going to run past him and pass across to him. And Malic, as well as, like, not bad and good crossing as well good pace as well he's not quite as good and I kind of see him as a more long term replacement because he's only 21 yeah and the midfield we've got Hasanovic who I think I'm playing as a deep line player maybe oh no he's the Metzala for now I think because I'm trying to, going to try and buy Metzala and the Radovac is the deep line playmaker and Milosic is kind of shit, the centre midfield cover. I'm going to try and loan him out, I think. Yeah, loan him. Not selling him yet. We'll see. I'll get loan out for a season, see how he develops, then maybe sell him. And Osmich is the better better backup option. Similar to the other players, but not quite as good. He's a better tackler. A lot of them are very good defensively. A lot of them have good tackling. Or well, they're all kind of 8 or above 12 for Hasanovic. But I don't really play very defensive midfielders. I have one deep line playmaker who's kind of like pulling the strings in defensive midfield kind of position, but the other one's going forward and which brings me to the attacking players I've got Aladdin Sisic who I think is very I think he's very good for a right, right winger at this level he's got 10 of all of the stats for right winger and he's got 15 off the board he's particularly good as well so I think he's going to be smart and put a lot of decent crosses in and get good positioning over here on the right also his name I'm going to change it to Aladdin because there's too many not a great note. How do you? Is it there? Yes. There's too many itches in this team, so it'd be nice to have the odd nickname. And Aladdin obviously is kind of a many first name, so I'll change it to Aladdin for now. And we don't have a, a backup right winger yet, so I'm going to try and buy one of those. Although I have a few lined up already, but I don't want to spend too much money because I think Aladdin's maybe the first team player, and I want to get someone young. Which brings me to attacking the. Attack in midfield, advanced playmaker attack is what I normally play, and Maric is our best choice there. He's still quite, oh, he's quite young, I didn't realise he was 23 years old. And yeah, he's just quite kind of good overall, not only like great um, stats, but all, all good. His composure is not great, his position is not great, but his vision, technique, and passing are all 12 13. That's, we want him to be lingering behind the striker and passing to the right wing or passing to the inside forward or passing to the striker. So he's kind of the 
pulling the strings and occasionally running forward to get a goal, and he's not going to be that good at running forward and getting goals, but the rest he's going to be quite good at, so that's fine. And his backup is Alexander Ivanovic, uh, who is similar but worse, I would say. Uh, he's got a similar vision passing technique, but again, worse, and is not going to be very good at scoring goals. And left wing is Slobodan Milanovic, who is an inside forward. He wasn't very good at scoring, because he's not got that many goals. His composure's not bad, but yeah, he's finishing at six. It's pretty dire. Um, I remember his passing stuff. He's kind of good, he's kind of good but uh, in a similar way to Maric. He's kind of a one-trick pony. So with him, he's similar. He's going to kind of linger in the attacking midfield left position, tucking into the centre. And he's not going to get many goals, but he is going to be able to pass and set people up. So... Luckily, we have a very good striker who I'll get to in a second. Actually, very, very close because, very soon, sorry, because I don't have a sub left winger. I have to buy one. A similar situation with Aladdin where they're both in their late 20s and both quite good. So I'm going to try and get a young player who can slowly phase into the team, which brings us to Glicic, who is quite a good poacher, I would say, because he's got acceleration and pace, both at decent levels. His finishing could be high, but composure 14. Finishing 11, first touch 14, heading 14, off the ball 14, technique 14. He's a really solid poacher. And with those like top quality um, creative players who aren't very good at scoring, we're hoping that Glissage is going to be the one that clinches a lot of games. And also his backup, Jakupovic? Uh, Jakupovic? I'm not sure how to pronounce it. He, I might change his name later on. We'll see. Uh, he's similar, and he's not quite as good at composure and finishing. They're swapped over weirdly. So Glitter has got finishing eleven and composure fourteen. So they're the opposite and one less. And he's not quite as quick. So he's again quite similar to Glissich, but not as good. Off the ball fourteen the same and technique only twelve. But he's gonna be a good backup and he's young, he's only twenty five, so he's got a lot of years ahead of him. But I'm gonna try and buy another young eighteen, nineteen year old who's gonna get the odd game because it's I need to have three strikers. I've got loads of chaff as well that I'm just kind of going to be selling or loaning depending on their age. Uh, this guy Kessic is one of them as well. He's paid a lot and he's not that good. Although he's pretty good, but he's not worth one half, one point one k a year a week. So I'm going to try and loan him out and potentially sell him next season, cause I, or even keep him because his potential ability is quite high, according to the coach. And there's this guy. What's his name? Civic or Civic. Um, who the assistant manager seems to like but I don't really like any of his stats and I don't really play defence midfielders so he'll get probably get a few games when we play defence midfielders against a much stronger team like FK Sarajevo the top team but um, he's going to be not very useful and I'll probably want to get rid of him eventually so yeah the BH Telecom Premier League the Bosnian League Last season, I think FK Sarajevo ran away with it. They were clearly 11 points clear at the end of the season. They didn't win the season before, though. I think there's a few good clubs in the in the league as well. I've heard of Zaljaznikar. Zaljaznikar. Um, oh, a good thing, actually, to look at is the team detailed stats as well. So... So Ricky Brijek with the with promoted this season. I might try and steal some of their players, but they're the ones that spend the most. I just spent nothing yet. FK Sarajevo have got a noticeably higher salary. It's three times ours currently, and it's yeah three times. Sorry, slightly less than three times, but for, for all of us, I'm pretty high up. Actually, I don't realize how high up we were. Um, yeah. I think if there's anything else, so just like I've, I've started looking for a senior affiliate to learn some players from, and I'm starting to scout and find some some players. Mostly it's going to be wingers at first, second midfield right, second midfield left. But if you're young players, it's going to be young players just to, for cover. We don't have any obvious, ob, uh, obvious gaps. The assistant manager seems to think the right back is weak, but I don't particularly agree. Um, but I might look to replace a first team player. Uh, I don't particularly like Hasanovic. He's pretty good, but Radovac is Radovac is better. 
we don't have great backups, so it'd be a good position to get a new centre midfielder and then put Hasanovic on the bench because I think he'd be a good sub. Um, but yeah, and I do like it was nice playing at Clifton Vale, but yeah, I, I, feel, I feel like next season I would have absolutely destroyed that league because I was already probably the the second or third best team in the league. I kind of got lucky when at the end, but. I fought a new challenge and, and I kind of need to follow these rules or I end up sticking at a club for years after winning the league and I always find that quite boring slowly dominating a league so here we are in Mostar in Bosnia and yeah just please subscribe if you want to keep following us in Bosnia now and like the video it probably helps us on the algorithm somewhere thank you for watching this video all the way through and if I've missed anything I'll probably catch up with the next video on Monday um, and we'll probably see transfers in the first game on Monday and have a nice um, what's left of the afternoon and the evening bye